오늘은 참석할 거죠. 그러면 앞으로 하자. 세션에 신청해서 참여한 학생들도 있고 참여 안 하는 학생들도 있죠. 그래서 참여한 학생들은 어, 네, 보세요. 참여 참여 학생, 피해 세션 참여 학생. 이렇게. 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 이렇게
시가 써서 그런 그런데 어, 지금이라도 지난주에 이렇게 참여한다고 얘기 안 했어도 지금이라도 시간이 가능하고 참여하고 싶은 학생은 보니까 월요일날 2시에 만나는 분들 수도 있고 화요일날 2시에 만나는 분들 수도 있고 그런 학생이 없을 수가 있어요. 이런 식으로 따로 그렇게 하는 편이 있으니까 어, 지난주에 참여를 안 한다고 신청을 안 했어도 지금 이번 주에 와가지고 우리 TV에다 얘기하면 되니까 어, 가능하면 참여하면 어, 좋을 것 같아요. 계속 학교를 찍을 거고 조금이라도 더 도움을 받기 원하면 분명히 앞으로 숙제하는 데나 이런 데 도움이 될 겁니다. 혼자 하는 것 같아서 참여하면 좋을 것 같고 아무도로 학생 이름이 뭐더라? 인빈학생이에요. 네. 어, 알겠습니다. 그리고 지난주 렉처 발을 어떻게 들었는지 모르겠는데 아까 어, 제가 미리 얘기를 안 했잖아요. 어, 제가 강의한 줄 알고 왔을 것 같은데 그래서 영어로 강의했고 영어로 강의해서 조금 어, 어, 좀 알아듣기 힘든 부분이나 아니면 어, 잘 알아듣는 부분 이런 부분이 있을 수도 있어요. 그래서 TV 세션에서 아마 그런 부분들을 어, ETA들이 얘기할 수도 있을 것 같고 그렇게 있을 것 같아요. 그리고 어, 영어 강의 있잖아요. 그리고 이제 이렇게 강의해주는 그 ETA는 열심히 하는데 조금 그 알아듣기 힘든 부분이 있을 수도 있어요. 근데 주가 가수로 익숙해질 겁니다. 그래서 그 부분은 그래. 좋겠어요. 오케이. 그러면 리뷰 세션을 한 10분 정도 하는 거니까 준비되면 하면 될것 같아요. 조금만 시작을 해야 되는데 그 시작 시간을 어, 오늘 일단 오늘 학생들한테도 그렇고 지금 있는 학생들 어, 시간을 한 시간 땡겨서 3 시부터 다섯 시로 하는 게 어떤가 생각 중인데 가능 하나 세 시까지 힘들 것 같다는 게 지금 이십 분 그러면 일단은 원래대로 네 시부터 하던 걸로 할게요. 아마 우리 이제 4시부터 다음 주부터는 어, 대기업음악이 대기업음악이 이제 깔려져 있어요. 오케스트라 그리고 통합대기업 위해서 4시부터 연습을 하게 됩니다. 그래서 대기업음악을 들으면서 해야 될수 있습니다. 일단은 어, 바꾸지 않고 4시부터 시작하는 걸로 할게요. 시험을 맡게 됐고요. 전 예과 1학년 양사연입니다. 어, 저번 주 내용 간단히 10분 정도 복습하고 이제 2차 강의 들어갈 건데요. 네. 일단 처음에는 What is the fundamental difference between the art and the art technology에 대한 질문인데요. 어, 혹시 질문을 하자면 클라이스틱이랑 인파이틱 뭐가 다른지 기억나는 사람 있나요? 질문하면 답들 알면 답을 해주세요. 어, 첫 번째 질문에 대해서 제가 말을 하자면 이제 스크래치 노래지는 리페이지 노래지는 다르게 좀 엄연한 사실을 말하는 거죠. 그러니까 어떤 명제, 뭐 사의 제곱분은 이다라고 말할 수 있도록 그러니까 컷 프로그래밍에 딱히 사용하지 않는 엄연한 사실만을 말하는 거고 반대로 리페이지 노래지는 어떤 기능을 내가 수행하고자 할 때. 컴퓨터에게 내가 어떤 기능을 맡기고자 할때 컴퓨터에게 이 사실을 어떻게 전달해야 하는가에 대해서 말하는 게 인피라티스 논리지였죠. 그러니까 루트를 구할 때는 뭐부터 시작해서 개수를 설정하고 그 값의 근사치를 다가간다. 저런 그런 방법론들을 제시해 주는 게 인피라티스 논리지라고 할수 있었죠. 어, 그 다음에 
한 질문은 ingredients of a l g o r i t h m 인데 이게 세 가지가 있는데 이거는 아는 분은 답을 해주셨으면 좋겠습니다. 혹시 아시는 분? 제가 시켜도 되나요? 이것은 그 모던 컴퓨터 아키텍처에서 나온 거고요. 알고리즘의 세 가지 요소는 그러니까 알고리즘 어떤 걸 수행하는 거잖아요. 그러니까 첫 번째는 플로우 컨트롤, 우리가 어떤 통제를 해야 된다. 흐름에 대한 통제를 해야 되고 두 번째는 이 코드를 어디서 멈출 건지가 중요하겠죠. 그러니까 무한 로프를 재생을 한다면 코드가 별것없이 나오지 않거나 너무 많은 코드가 별것없이 나와서 이게 코드를 실행할 수 있는 상황이 안 되니까 그렇게 언제 스탑할지를 알아야 되는 거죠. 그리고 수 있는데요. 예, 인페리티 너리지랑 좀더 겹치는 부분이긴 하죠. 그러니까 어떤 알고리즘을 실행을 하려면 우리가 어떤 방법을 알아야 되고 그 연속적인 단계가 필요하다. 그래서 알고리즘의 세 가지 구조, 그러니까 인그리디언트는 우리가 통제, 흐름을 어떻게 통제할 건지가 첫 번째. 그 다음에 그리고 언제 멈출 건지 그리고 간단한 단계 연속을 어떻게 다시 할 건지에 대한 것이죠. 어, 이 질문에 대해서 아, 답하실 수 있는 분이 있나요? 알고리즘 구조, 알고리즘 인크리디언트 중에 하나였죠. 간단한 단계 연속은 무엇인가? 스텝스를 말하자면 알고리즘 구성 요소 중 하나인데 이게 말하는 바는 우리가 코드를 입력할 때 순서가 존재한다는 건데요. 그러니까 코드에서 오더가 존재하는데 우리가 첫 줄부터 여덟 번째 줄까지 코드를 작성한다고 할때이 코드는 항상 첫 번째 줄부터 실행되어야 한다는 것을 말하는 것입니다. 그러니까 순서가 없이 여덟 번째 줄에서 역순으로 코드가 재생된다는 거는 코드에서 너무 랜덤하게 재생이 되는 거잖아요. 그러니까 그런 규칙이 없으니까 첫 번째 줄부터 시행된다는 것을 감안하고 우리가 코드를 작성해 나가야 한다가 시퀀스 오브 심플 스텝스를 말하는 것입니다. 이거는 많이 기억하실 거라고 생각하는데 익스트 컴퓨터와 스토리 컴퓨터의 차이에 대해 말해 주실 거예요. 목적만을 수행하려고 만들어진 것이죠. 그 계산기는 오직 계산을 하려고만 계산기가 만들어진 거고 근데 그에 반해 스토리 프로그램에 속하는 맥북이나 노트북, 스마트폰은 보편적인 기능을 수행하되 우리가 원하는 기능이 있다면 어플리케이션이나 설치하거나 우리가 또는 어플리케이션을 만들어서 그 기능을 수행할 수 있도록 보편적인 체계를 구축한다고 생각하시면 편할 것 같습니다. 그리고 이거는 이게 그때 말했던 인풋, 아웃풋에 관련된 건데요. 그러면 기억나는 거 있어요? 메모리, 네. 그 표가 
있었거든요. 인풋하고 아웃풋 그 메모리 그 아래는 CPU, CPU였죠. 그러니까 여기서 가장 크게 알아야 될건 우리가 인풋 입력이라고 부르는 게 바로 CPU를 가지 않는다. 그리고 CPU에 있는 게 바로 출력으로 가지도 않고 그 중간에 있는 메모리를 항상 고쳐야 한다라는 게 가장 중요한 것이거든요. 그러니까 인풋을 우리가 출력했을 때 CPU를 바로 가서 실행할 수도 없고 CPU가 바로 뱉어내는 걸 우리가 출력을 할 수도 없는 상황이기 때문에 메모리가 존재한다고 그때 내용에 들어 있었거든요. 그걸 알아주시면 좋을 것 같습니다. 어 그리고 이거는 되게 파이썬에서 많이 쓰이는 건데 파이썬 데이터 타입인데 타입 컨버전이라고 부르거든요. 그러니까 이 애플에서 플로트하고 인트 사이에 전환이 되려면 어떻게 해야 하나 라고 했을 때 제가 3을 주어줬을 때 3.0이 출력되게 하려면 어떻게 해야 될까요? 이건 뒤에 계신 제가 인풋을 3을 넣고 검진 네. 3을 넣고 3.0이 나오려면 그러니까 앞으로 10을 열고 플로트 바로 열고 3이 되어야겠죠? 반대로 그럼 3.0이 출력이 되겠죠? 반대로 3.0을 3을 출력하려면 네, 인트 바로 열고 3.0을 넣으면 3이 출력이 되겠죠? 그럼 반대로 3.14를 인트로 만들고 싶다고 할 때도 3.14에 걸으시고 Hello everyone. So I hope that uh, you know you didn't feel happy with your homework. <laughs> Just okay because it's so easy. So you can feel happy and enjoyable. So uh, one more time, if you have any uh, problems you cannot solve by yourself, feel free to connect to our tutors. Sit here. So they are willing to help you. All right. So last week we uh, go. I mean, we went through some uh, contents about uh, very basic uh, knowledge about variable and uh, computer architecture. So we hope that you, you know, forget it. So today we want to cover a new thing uh, that's in between branching and iteration. So let's uh, start now. So before we move on, uh, we need some analysis on basic. I believe you know that, but uh, it's important. First, the, uh, first the uh, comparison. So you know that we have a comparison. This one is uh, greater. This one is greater or equal. This one is smaller, smaller or equal. So. So let's, for example, we have a, yeah. So for example, we have a tree, smaller than five. So this one will return true. Yeah, or if we have a tree, Three greater than five will be false. So we call this one a comparison operator. And the most important thing is the comparison one way evaluate Boolean is in true or false. True or false. May we have us appear the third one. Okay. And here we have a quality comparison. And keep in mind that we have a two symbol here, equal, equal, not single, equal, just the all, all right. And uh, maybe you do not uh, familiar with this one, we have, uh, we call it logical operators, or logic operator. So not here, this means if a two, not a, this means four. If A falls, not A become true. And A and B. So A and B are uh, only true if and only if A and B together. E true. Yeah. True and true. A and B true. A or B 
also true. But if A true will be false, or A will be false, but A or B is still true here, and similar, similar for the rest now. So, uh, all here, it's only false if and only if A false and B e also false. So it's easy. So the covariation operator, we call it, uh, I mean, if we have an expression A and B, and we have operators in the middle. So if you give covariation operator, for example, A is only B. So this one, we call it conditional expression. Because this expression always returns to a form, to a force. So, so we call it conditional. So we have four symbol here. This one, yeah, uh, like I said, this one return true. Right? This one is true. But this one, this one is true here. Yeah. But this one is false. So if you evaluate this equation, it becomes false. Alright. How about this one? This one we have a A equal to three here. B equal to, uh, I'm sorry, A equal to 3, B equal to 2. So A plus B equal to 5. 5 would have been 3. So if you need 2, right? So uh, it's similar to, uh, I mean, if you, if you give variable, it's still the same. We have two, uh, two variables here, number A and number B here. So you win now the results. So 18, I mean 15 here, absolutely greater than 8. So it could be true. Yeah. How about this one? 24 and 8. So we have 24 here divided by 8. So it equal to 3. All right. But 3 do not, I mean doesn't greater than 3 here. So the whole expression will be written false. Okay. So uh, the in the previous lecture we know that uh, I mean in the also in the review session uh, we know that if you want to build a recipe you need to have a three ingredients. The first one is the symbol steps. The second one is Follow control. And the third one is when you stop. So the third one and the last one you already know. But uh, how about the uh, control follow? So you want to review, I mean, you want to uh, study about the control follow today. So we have two kinds of control follow. The first one we call ranging. And the second one, I'm sorry, uh, for ranging here, we have a just one kind of ranging is for if, if, if statement. So you're going to learn in the some next slides. And the second, control follow here, we have a, we call it loop here. Loop. So we have two kind of loops. The first one is for loop, and the second one is for loop. So, time control follow here. We have a ranging here. And then loop. All right. Ranging check if, but look, here we have four and y. Yeah. Whatever uh, language you learn, you can learn C, Java, uh, Julia, or something, MATLAB here. They exactly the same. Ranging and loop. So if you you know how to use ranging and loop of uh, C, so you can say that, hey, you know C. If you know how to use ranging loop of Java, you can say that you know Java. Right. Exactly the same. So uh, after you understand uh, those basic uh, knowledge here, whenever you want to learn new language, just Google how to use ranging of Java, for example. How you use ranging of C, how you use ranging of MATLAB, and that's it. Just 20 minutes, you know how to use that language. All right. 
the first they follow the second is then chapter. So let's call let's cover the first one, if specimen here. So here we have if here. Yeah. If if you record it's a keyboard. We call it a keyboard. So you need to tie exactly the keyboard here. If because this is keyboard of uh, Python, Python defined that, so you have to follow. You have no choice. And next, if in a condition, so the condition is actually a conditional expression, right? It's a conditional expression. So let's uh, we have a skirt in the reverse slice. So if this condition is true, so you're going to do the expression inside the uh, block here. So the first kind of if specimen. And that's one we call if else. Yeah. So if this condition is correct, so you're going to do the block inside. But if the condition is wrong, incorrect, so you're going to do this one. You don't do this one. But instead that, you do this one. All right. Yeah. So but in here, you see that if this condition is incorrect, so you, go, you you don't need to do anything, all right? But this one, if incorrect, you have it's the plan B here. So we have plan A and plan B, all right? Here it's more complex, uh, but still uh, similar. We have if here, yeah, so this condition is true. We're gonna do this, this one. If uh, if this condition is not not true, so you're gonna consider the second condition here. So if this condition is true, so we jump inside here. But if this condition is still incorrect, so we're going to move to here. So how many cases we have here? Here we have actually three cases. All right. Oops. K8, KB, and KC. How many here? How many cases we have here? Anyone have ideas? How many cases we have in here? So we have two cases here. The first one is this condition is correct. So we're gonna do this one. And the second case, if this condition is incorrect, we don't do anything. Alright, two cases. How about here? How many cases we have? How many cases we have here? If we have if and else specimen. Two. Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah, number two. Because if it correct, we do inside. If incorrect, we do here. So two cases. Even though we have if else, what's it just called two cases? Similar to we have single if specimen here. Alright. Thank you for your answer. And uh, how about this example? Uh, I provide example here. So we can uh, type in this example into the computer and you can see the result. Here we input a number, all right? But remember that everything input here is not a number. In, if you use input specimen, you need to convert this into an integer number here by using the data type conversion. So, so what happens if I input it equal to six here? What happens? So, anyone have an answer? So if equal to six here, so this one, six modulo number two equal to zero, all right? It's correct. Because 3 divided by 2 equal to 3, all right? No reminder. So this one is correct, so we can bring now even number. But if it, if it equal to 7, so the reminder is different from 0. So because 3 multiplied by 2 is equal to number 1. 
So we will now to our part number. Okay. So let's see. So we uh, have an it here. It we input here. Alright. You can type in it equal. Get a message. Alright. If you will now type it here. So we see that. Uh, let input number seven. But the type is not integer. We need to convert it into integer. So I change it equal to in edge and edge. I'm sorry, edge. We input edge here. And then, and then what? So if edge multiple 2 equal to 0, so we will now see even number. All right. So if uh, they are not 0, so we will now, it's odd number. Okay, so let's uh, start a program. If I enter 7 here, so it's an odd number. Okay. If I enter the number 100, absolutely, it's an even number. Yeah. A little bit funny. This one. What happens if I age here equal to 16? Oh, sorry.
，就是咱是咱未来是一片，一片是没有，是咱万州最好处。医生就比如万州最好，所以是咩？一片片的是 four spice， 一片片有 two spice， 一些都有。But uh, my recommendation is four. So in here, one, two, three, four, right? That four spice. You can do top, yeah. You top other in that spice. I mean, you know, different between the top and the spice here. Yeah. And the top, the top key and the spice. So in coding, uh, we recommend that you should use spice instead of top here. Why? Because you know, uh, if you use Windows, I mean Windows operating system, and you use the top key inside your code, and you send your codes to your friend, but your friend use uh, Mac OS. Possible. So your code will become messy. I mean, it's not tidy uh, anymore because you know Windows, Linux, Mac OS, they have uh, their own way to define a top key. They're yeah, different, right? Okay. But for space, all the same, exactly the same. So they follow the same structure. Yeah, sorry. Can you uh, do, do you give the font? Yes. I can't read it. Yeah. That's what So uh in uh so finally I mean that uh when you type in the code, so use inspire one, two, three, four. Yeah. But but don't worry when we work with a few project uh the, the software we use to type in the code it will automatically define the indentation for you. So you don't need to worry. All right. So uh, why this one important? So uh, indentation in your the language, uh, it, it, it's, it's not important. You can do whatever you want for indentation. But in my hand, it's very sensitive. You need to follow exactly the indentation. So in here, you see that, uh, this one, in here. So this one is forced by beginning from the if specimen here. So it's mean that this uh, specimen belongs to this if specimen. So if this condition is correct, so we're going to do it whatever inside here. Okay. But, you see here, if this condition is correct, so we're going to do whatever inside here. You see that? So we have a true indentation here. The first one we, we have here. We have a, this uh, interval. It was forced by. So this is the first indentation, and then you have another indentation here, still forced by. Forced by, you see that? So this block code, block code belongs to this if statement, and similarly this one belongs to this uh, if statement. Yeah. But then here you see that the if here, the if and if here have a the same indentation with. This uh, if condition, so it means that this one and this one are independent of each other. All right, they are different block codes, and similarly, yeah. Okay, so whatever inside here do not depend on whatever inside here. All right, but uh, this one here, they have they have uh, the same indentation. So this means that if 
is what we skill. We want the yeah, 100% we will skill this one. Okay. So the next one is, uh, yeah, like I said, the single equal symbol and the double symbol. So in here, we, uh, keep in mind that when we have each segment, the, oper the operator inside is the double uh, equal symbols, all right? Not a single one. So what happens if you use a single one instead of the double ones? Yeah. This will give you an error. Why? Because this one is the side operator. All right, so I'm going to put the side operator. And it doesn't return true or false. Actually, it doesn't return anything. So the if condition, yeah, I mean, the if specimen do not, I mean, doesn't know what I need to do with the side operator. All right, so I will show you example. Instead of, uh, for example, I guess H equal to number three on that. To what you? So, right. so next one is not what you. All right. Then it's skill three here. So what you? Number four. Uh, not what you. What if I change? A double symbol, uh, equal symbols become a single one. Here. Let's see what happens. Yeah, you see that? It is in syntax error. Right? You cannot use uh, the single one in, inside if assessment. Keep in mind that double one is a comparison. The single one is a sign. Okay. So the next, uh, the, uh, the next contain the uh, loop, loop, all right, yeah, loop here. Loop, it means uh, repeat. All right, loop. So we have a first one in Y loop. We have condition here. So the condition is similarly. Also the condition of expression, we can true or false. And if this condition is true, so we are gonna do all step inside the block code here. Alright. So after I mean the first time to, to check condition, if it's correct, so you jump in into here. And you do anything inside here. After you finish, you want to get back here and check the condition again. If this condition is still true, you move in here one more time and then you go back here one more time and check the condition again. Until, so you do this, you repeat until this condition is false. Let me show you example. Here, we have a the beginning n equals zero here. So if n smaller than five, I'm gonna bring out number n. And I increase number n by plus one. Okay. So at, at the beginning, n equals to zero. So we check here. This condition is correct. Alright, zero smaller than five, so it's correct. We, we jump in here. Bring out zero. And then we increase n here. So n now equal to number one. Okay. So we get back here, we check condition again. Oh, we still correct. So we bring now number n again. So we have number one here. And then we increase, increase in the main again. Become number two. And then we get back here, we check condition. 
two still smaller than five. So still correct. Jump in here, bring out the two, and then get here, increase one more, become three. So get back here, three smaller than five, still correct. Bring down again, three, increase again, four. Get back here, still correct. So we continue the repetition. And then we get here, plus one becomes five here. And we get up the condition, oh, we not correct anymore. It's incorrect. So we exit here. Exit the loop, all right? So uh, similarly, this one similar. But you see that instead of uh, writing the full expression here, you can use a shock All right, this one. Plus, yeah. Similar to, I mean, exactly the same as, and plus one. So I'm writing here for a shortcut. All right. The next loop we want to cover is the for loop here. The for loop. So different from the while loop, we have the syntax different here. I mean, this one is n. All right. So I don't know. we have four here, four in range. This is the syntax of Python we have to follow. All right. So this one is variable. Var variable here we call it counter. In the for counting. And then we have a bullshit number here. Keep in mind that it's most deep in the journal number. If you input a lot here, it will be it, it will be error. Alright. Most deep in the journal. Alright. And similar to uh, why we have uh, the for loop we will repeat until Sorry, this one is not repeat until uh, this one is more a little bit complicated. I will show you example. Uh, but the first thing we need to understand the range starts from here. The range, the range is a function of Python. Uh, you, you will learn about function in the next lecture. But in here, just uh, accept it. All right. So we have a star, stop, and step here. So in the range, uh, we start from this one and we repeat until we reach, I mean, we get start minus one. All right. For example, here, we have n in range five. So if we just write uh, five here, so we start from zero. Start equal to zero. Stop equal to five. And step equal to one. So what we're going to read now here? We have read now 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, not 5. Why? Here, we look, repeat until stop minus 1. So 5 minus 1, just 4. All right. This is the diagram for the loop. So we need to call here, enter here. If this condition is correct, you move here, do the whatever inside, and then you go to the part again. Check the condition again. So if the condition is still correct, good. Jump in inside again. But if this condition is incorrect, so here, we exit the loop. All right, so I will show you example. Okay, so we have four, for example, let's start with four. We have a let's call index, so it's just a variable. You can name whatever you want. But I, uh, my favorite is index, all right. So in rank, so we have five here, yeah. all right. Ring index, all right. And read it down. One, uh, zero, one, two, three, four, see yeah. If you want to read all the number in just a single line, 
you can do it. Yeah, try this one. You see that? One, two, three, four. If you change this one into spiders. One, two, one, zero, one, two, three, four. You see that? Just fucking right. All right, so you can, uh, uh, you, you, you can change the value of star. Instead of zero, you can uh, define any number you want. For example, I want to define uh, two here. So we move from two. Three and four, right? And the last uh, argument is the step. So instead of, I mean, in, in, instead of uh, step one by one, you can step two by two, all right? Here. So let's change this one to number ten. Because if we start on two, we we walk two steps somewhere two and four. Six, eight, all right. We never ever get the number ten. If you want to get a number ten, try the plus two here. See that? Okay. How about the uh, different from the for loop? If you want to use the while loop, you need to initialize the counter outside the loop. Here, yeah. zero. Counter smaller than ten. Ah, you can start a counter from two here. We now a counter and increase the counter by two steps instead of one step 